Now, in this next part of the interview, you're going to see here on the Chris Cuomo Project that you can have disagreements about the issues. It doesn't mean that the other person is a demon or a devil. Look, it can mean that if you're having a disagreement over the value of uh, a particular group of human beings or of whether or not it's okay to kill every time you're angry, you know, something perverse and existential and highly immoral. But that's very rarely what we're talking about. We're talking about things that were complicated and nuanced and didn't have to be black and white, but they were made that way out of political advantage. And that's how the conversation continues. What are these guys getting bored over here? You guys what are? they're doing? They're I'm quite, loving this. They're, <laughs> anyway, whatever. I'm going on. No, See, no. This is supposed to be an interview of you and your no. dark secrets. What's the worst thing you've ever done? The worst thing I've ever done was to forget what I'm supposed to be about. Every time, I have an amazing ability to repeat mistakes. <laughs> Been uh, there. An amazing ability. And I just started looking into myself more about this. You know, and in this way, uh, I'm very shy about this stuff. But everything that happens in life, there's very little that you control, right? Most things happen to you, not by you. But with everything that happens, you have an absolute ability to control what it means and how to react to it. And that is really easy to say and really hard to do. And what I did when I got shit canned, and I really, I got I, I to be honest, I didn't handle it well. Um, I really didn't. But can I just ask, just as, because you're explaining how you keep repeating the same mistakes, which is yeah. a very frustrating and very human phenomenon. But do you think you got fired for mistakes that you made? Yes. Really? And I'll tell you why. Um, because did I do what they say I did? No, I never lied. I didn't go after my brother's accusers. And you could say, well, why not? Isn't that what you're supposed to do? His party has rules. And the rule is an allegation is enough. And you don't really go after the, if, the accuser if they are believed, okay? That's what he signed up for, okay? You're talking about the Democratic Party. That's right. Believe That's what he signed women. up. One allegation is enough. He had more than one, okay? So that's the rule. And that was my conversation with him. I never went after his accusers. I didn't work the media. I didn't call up and say, I wouldn't have called you, that's for sure. But I didn't call people up and say, do me a favor, we're friends. Be nice to my brother. And here's how we know that has to be true, okay? You don't think that if I had called somebody up and asked for a favor, they'd be raising their hand right now and saying, he called me, he called me. You don't think that they would immediately announce it? Of course they would. I would have been fine if you'd done that because it's your brother, but that's just But I'm saying the, the media would say, no, this is unethical, blah, blah. I didn't do what they say, but I foolishly believed, and this was a mistake, that my bosses, the media, the people who I thought knew me would allow this uncomfortable balance to be respected and seen for what it was. And because look, is it a conflict? Of course it's a conflict. Unless your boss says it's okay, which obviously he did, right? Because obviously um, there was no secret about me talking to my brother and listening to some of his meetings with his staff. Um, and it was a mistake for me to think that that would be respected and treated fairly. I should have never thought that way. I should have seen it for the way I would now, if someone came to me and said, you think that I'm, this is going to be a problem? I'd be like, Fine. yeah, it's going to be a problem. As soon as they find out about this, but can I just ask you, use, the, the and it was a mistake. The only me. part that rings a little false is when you said, to my ear, is when you said that would have been unethical. And so you're someone who's been in the media your whole life at high levels, ABC News, Fox News, CNN. Um, probably News Nation. News Nation and News Nation now. But like... You know, because you've lived in that world, that ethics in the media are like lower than they are among prostitutes. Like, I think. First of all, you got to live your own standard, right? Okay, fair. You got to live your own standard. And I believe in the media. I believe in it. I think it's, if not, I don't want to say the most, but it's definitely one of the main signatures of our democracy. And you know from your I travels. I couldn't agree more. Uh, and there's no question that's in so, so you're saying, to be clear, you believe in the idea of... I believe in the idea. Yeah, yeah. And do too. people practice it that way? 
Uh, not enough. Everything is imperfect. Everything that is human controlled is, is imperfect and uh, easily corrupted. Uh, some people do it very well, certainly better than I do. Some people suck and are mean and try to do things just for advantage. And it works really well because we reward the wrong things. Negativity is allowed to be a proxy for insight. Taking you down does lift me up. Yes. And people don't want to hear good things about Tucker Carlson. They want to hear bad things about Tucker Carlson. If I were to do uh, a profile of you that was uh, making a fair case for all the success you've had, it would get dismissed as a puff piece and I would be seen as a dupe. If I were to say falsely, but with just a little bit of proof that even regular people who aren't in our business would be like, God, the proof is kind of thin on this, that Tucker Carlson loves to kick puppies, they would say, that's a hard hitting piece of journalism right there. <laughs> because negativity is the proxy for insight. So that's our business. So they were, they were look, with that mindset, I made it too easy for them to come after me for my situation. And I sort of seen it, but more importantly, my real mistake was allowing my family to absorb that blow as if it were just about me and my brother, and it wasn't. And it's really hard to have something that goes so wrong in your life where you come out of it like, I don't even know what I would do differently. There's no world where I don't help my brother. There's no world where I don't help my family, where I don't help my friends. That's, that's, not, that's, that's all I am. But what I did to my family, what I did to my kids, I hate myself for it. And all I can do is to try to be different now and make different choices now. Like I don't pick fights the way I used to. I believe that my value at the time on CNN was, I'm gonna bring on Tucker Carlson. He's a smart guy. He's practiced on what he is. I'm gonna take him apart tonight. Not gratuitously, but I'm gonna take him on on his own basis. I want him at his best. Whatever his best argument is, let's have him on and let's get after it. I don't do that the same way anymore. And because you're gun shy or you know, because it's it's not worth what it did to my family. But there's been a saving grace, which is what brings me here today to be with you. It doesn't work anymore. Yeah. You tearing me apart on any issue, not personally, let's say it's just just policy. You just kill me on immigration, okay? It doesn't move the needle. The people who believe me think you're an asshole. And the people who believe you think that I'm an idiot who shouldn't be listened to. And that's it. It doesn't change any minds. It doesn't change any minds. The only thing that can change minds is to change your audience to critical thinkers and people who are open. They're not lemmings. They're not sheeple. They're not party people. They're independent. They're free agents. They're critical thinkers. And to have conversations that are uncomfortable. So how could you possibly be upset about being fired? I mean, this sounds like, this is not flattery, it's sincere. That sounds like a much more enlightened view of the world, a truer view of the world than the view that cable news encourages. That's a good thing, isn't it? It, look, again, bad things happen. You get an opportunity, what to do with them. I'm choosing to try to create a better professional mode for myself. But, but, I can't look at what happened to me and not see injury. Now, do I have the ability to say, Chris, I'll show you injury. Injury is falling off a crane. Injury is getting cancer. Injury is not being able to feed your family. True. I am ridiculously blessed. I never think otherwise. My father would haunt me if I did. I know that for a fact. Um, but I had a platform, a position at a place where there was incredible reach. And I was able to weigh in on whatever mattered in the world and get an audience that was unfathomable to me before I was at CNN. And I lost that when I was fired and I'll never get it back, never. Um, and my name right now is Chris Cuomo, I'm okay with that, comma, fired by CNN, I accept that, that's a fact, comma, for lying about what he did to help his brother. That is not true and it cannot stand. And I cannot have my kids have to deal with that as a Google search of me. It's not true. And the people who said it 
know it's not true. So there's an injury. Uh, you know, I always used to, maybe I'm the one who grew up in the mafia family because I just don't see I that. I didn't grow up in a mafia <laughs> I know, family. I'm just joking. I'm I just, just want to take your head <laughs> no. and squeeze it. No. <laughs> Is that wrong? Is that evil? It's a little wrong, uh, but I'll accept it. Eating better matters, and it's easy with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved okay? This is an anti-junk product, and that matters because too many of us are shoveling chemicals into our faces, and they're all ready to go in just two minutes. You got 35 different options to choose from every week, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Also, there are more than 60 add-ons to help you stay fueled up and feeling good all day long. So what are you waiting for? Get started today and get after your goals. No prep, no mess, meals. Factor meals are ready to heat and eat. There's no prepping, cooking, or cleanup needed, which is nice. Factor is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast, premium options with no cooking required. Sign up and save. We've done the math. Factor is less expensive than takeout. And every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. Again, it's a no junk option. Head to factormeals.com slash Cuomo50 and use the code Cuomo50 to get 50% off. That's code Cuomo50 at factormeals.com slash Cuomo50 and you get 50% off. Support for the Chris Cuomo Project comes from Sundays. This fresh dog food made from a short list of human-grade ingredients works. Sundays was founded, co-founded, by Dr. Tori Waxman, a practicing vet who tests and formulates every version of each recipe. I wonder if they eat it themselves. I hope not. Anyway, my dogs on video will show you how they savage this food. And I have already been changing up the food to get more sustainable types of food. But here's what I love about this, okay? This is delivered as kibble. And let me tell you something. It is a game changer because my fridge is not stuffed with dog food Chinese entree trays where, you know, I'm worried that my son is going to grab one and eat it up one night thinking it's meatloaf and it may be human grade, but I don't want my kid eating it. You know what I mean? So the beautiful thing about this is it's easier to store. It's easier to feed. And I know the ingredients are right and my dogs love it. And I know it's better for them. So. You want to get 40% off your first order of Sundays? Go to sundaysfordogs.com slash Chris or use the code Chris at checkout. I just don't, look, lying is bad. It's always bad. Lying is always bad. But doing whatever you can to help your family, again, it's just a hierarchy of loyalty. And anyone who tells you that you have, except to God, a higher loyalty than to your own family that's your enemy. No, your loyalty is to your family, okay? Period. So I don't, you know, you say you didn't lie. I actually completely believe you. Um, but if I found out that you did lie, I wouldn't judge you. It's your brother. I mean, like, what? I think it matters. If your brother was on the run and he said, can you give me 500 bucks for a fake passport? In a second. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I feel. So, like, how is that a sin? I don't know if it's a sin. I don't know if it's right. I don't know if it's wrong. I'm just telling you that's the way I am. Yeah. But good. If well, I, I had been that. if I had been lying, look, I apologized, okay? And this was really hard for me. Not I mean, I apologize all the time when you make repeated mistakes the way I do I you and you lose your temper and you do stupid shit that you didn't mean to do, you wind up apologizing a lot if you're trying to get better. Um, I apologized for what? For what I did? No. Uh, for helping my brother? No. Because it, I was told by my boss that people at CNN felt that they'd been compromised by what was coming out about what I was doing for my brother. That, I never, I, I never saw that coming. And if I had known at the beginning, and I offered to leave twice, if I knew at the beginning that it was gonna be bad for the men and women who were working at CNN doing what they were doing and I was gonna compromise their ability to do it, I would have quit 
like that. Can, if I can, can I just say, I mean, I, I don't know. How long did you spend at CNN? Over 10 years. Over 10 years. So I didn't spend quite 10 years. So I spent a long time there. And the idea that they would have moral qualms about that at CNN is just not believable. Just don't believe that. I mean, they, they put on from Operation Tailwind when I was there to the Russiagate stuff, which was just factually untrue, to all kinds of other stuff. Like, they have no qualms about lying because I've seen it. They did when I worked there. And so I just don't believe that they were morally offended by a man helping his brother. And not even in ridiculous ways. Like, you weren't, you know what I mean? So I guess my question is, I'm used to seeing people taken out for political reasons. You're from one of the most famous Democratic Party families in the world. You're related by marriage to the Kennedys. Like, no one's doubting, right, what side you're on, at least by appearances. Why? Were, what was the real reason they took you out? I just, I just don't believe that. That they were offended. I mean, I, bullshit. I, I hurt CNN. How? Because the media saw me and what I was doing as being beneath the level of transparency and ethical obligations that someone should have in the position that I was I in. I don't like to swear, you know, but I just can't say bullshit enough. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. But I'm, I'm telling you. Jeff that's... Zucker was like having an affair with an employee, supposedly, according to the media. But, um, and was later let go because of it, according to the media. But the point is, I just don't believe that. And my guess, because I don't know, because no one there will talk to me anymore, but my guess is- They won't was, talk to me either, yeah. which really hurts. It's crazy, though. It really hurts, but I'll but tell you I what, I think though. it was the testosterone level thing. They just don't want well, a man who doesn't hate himself on TV. I, that's what I think. Look, that's not the reason that was stated. People get frustrated with me because I don't go bad on Jeff Zucker, and I won't. Two reasons. What I said earlier about the opportunities he gave me. And two, that's a bad place. Uh, and I've been there. And if you let yourself get absorbed. I get it. It is hard to get out. So I have so much respect and concern for so many people who are still at CNN. And I think it's an amazing place. It's capable of amazing things. And I really miss what I had there. I get it. Um, and it would be easier, I guess, uh, and, and outwardly more satisfying to be like, I, I hate them and I hope bad no, no, things no, no. happen. And I'm but glad I just, you don't, I don't feel, feel that way. That. I don't feel that don't way feel about my that. last employer. I'm not mad at them at all. I never feel mad at them and I'm not, and I mean it. But um, I'm mad. I'm angry about what happened to but me. But I just don't, there's clearly a reason that's different from the stated reason. And I think the most obvious answer- I think I was just trouble. I became trouble for them. And the brand matters more. And when it was working for them, I was the man. And they and you, couldn't get but enough But you were me. the highest rated show. When right. You got Not fired. even close. It was, I was the number one show. But the- They can't fire you if you've got the number one show. Oh, yes, they can. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, like this. And out you go. Wow. Um, and look- oh, Wow. It's, it's a tough- <laughs> Keep that in mind. <laughs> it's, a, it's a tough business. Uh, I understand that. And here's what I tell myself now. And I think this is important for our audiences also. This is what I signed up for. The, the really, really impressive ability you have to separate yourself from the impressions of you. I, I don't have that. You, you, that's good. I say that, but I don't, I don't have it the way you do. I now tell myself this. And this is what keeps my hands like this instead of like this. I signed up for this. You want to be forward-facing? No, You right. want to be in the media? No, that's true. Uh, you want to have the platform? You want people to listen to what you say? Then you're going to have to listen to what they say. And if they don't like you, you have to take it. And that's what you signed up for. If you don't like it, that's fine. Leave. Go work somewhere else. Go start an, uh, an, uh, an electrical services company. And uh, have a different life. And live it. But if you want to be public-facing and you want to be part of the dialogue in the arena right? As Teddy Roosevelt said, then this is what you signed up for. And I tell myself that all the time. And it never ends well. I mean, it, it doesn't. It always ends in tears. These relationships with these media companies, I've lived it. Um, I have to ask though, did anyone, well, was it Zaslav, by the way, who did it, do you think? <sighs> Look, he wasn't in yet. Um, but it's hard for me to believe that you know, Jeff Zucker, I thought he like was making that deal happen. You know, another regret for me on this is, God, you know, Jeff was so important to that place. He was so valuable. And because of this dynamic, he wound up being out. 
And I never wanted that. You know, people say, well, at least he got fired. I, I, I feel terribly that he got fired. Good. Um, and he was so valuable to that place. And we, we see that now. Uh, I don't know uh, who knew and who did what. I'm told things. I'm not going to repeat them because I can't prove them. But I don't think it was a one-man decision. It, it never is. So, but when you did leave after 10 years as the highest, your highest rated show when you left. I didn't leave, I was fired. When you got shit canned, as mm -hmm. you said. Um, did any of the other anchors call you to say, gosh, I'm, you got kind of shafted, I'm sorry to see you go, or? No. Nobody called you? No on-air person? People called. Uh, uh, a couple of guys, but none of the ones that you know or you recognize with the CNN brand. Why? Uh, because they were told things that weren't true. And I think in fairness to them, you take care of yourself in those positions. And you don't get caught in a situation where maybe you'll get swept into the controversy of being on Cuomo's side and he's the wrong side, he's the bad side. Uh, I'm on Jeff's side, I'm on C whatever side. You protect yourself. But if you work for a company or any organization that prevents you or terrifies you into not making human contact, expressing sympathy, I don't to know that they person. terrified them into it. I think it's I think it's either they didn't want to talk to me because they thought I fucked up, uh, or they didn't want to talk to me because they thought I messed up, uh, or they uh, didn't know what to do, or they were worried about what would happen if they did. And I but get By the it. way, they're not the only news organization that behaves like this at all. They all do, as far as I know. But isn't that a red flag that you're working for, like, horrible people? Look, it was an ugly situation. But they're ugly people, though. I mean, like, who would do that if I, you know, if I, if I fired someone who worked for me, who was popular or unpopular or whatever, I would never say to the other people on staff, don't ever reach out to that person. I don't judge it. You know, oh, I Mar do. <laughs> Mar Marcus... Marcus Aurelius is one of my, my favorite philosophers, right? He was the last of the good emperors, uh, whatever that means, in Rome. And he says the greatest revenge is to not be what you oppose. Well, I agree with that. And that is hard to do, especially for me. I'm ridiculously petty, and not just because I'm Sicilian. No, um, it's probably just because it's Sicilian. Well, maybe a little yeah. bit. Um, but the... Uh, it's really hard to do, and I don't judge people for not reaching out to me. I get it. I get that it was hard. Uh, I, I get that this is really painful for a lot of people in a lot of ways, and I, I really feel badly about that. I wish I had control over it, um, but I don't. And I am here, and I am a phone call away for anybody. And now people are calling. Yeah. Now they're calling, and... I'm good with that. And if I can help, I want to help. And if uh, if you want to reach out, I'm here. What do you think the chances are that some of the people who didn't call you, uh, I'm not naming Anderson or Wolf by name. You but, just did. Oh, I did. Sometimes I have trouble discerning between- the Inside in voice, the, outside the voice? The internal, the internal dialogue. That explains monologue. a lot. Uh, but that your colleagues will be calling you in a couple years as your former employer does collapse under the weight of its own irrelevance and sort of ask you for guidance on how to live outside the system? Well, look, it, it is different uh, doing what you're doing now, doing what I'm uh, doing now. Uh, I don't think CNN is going to collapse. Uh, I think it's a very uh, powerful organization. I think everybody's got to retool and find different ways to be effective. Uh, if anybody can do it, CNN will. I don't know the new management team there. I, I don't know this guy. I, I hear positive things about him uh, from people in-house. Um, it's hard times in the media. It is. News Nation, where I am, is hiring. Um, I think it's the only cable news outfit that's growing. Uh, it's the benefit of starting low. But <laughs> it, it, is, it is growing. And I think the main reason that it is is because there's such a desperation for different and disruption Yes. of the norms. And I know it because people say it to me all the time. The most common thing is, I don't know what they're going to say after this, but the most common thing I've heard up until this is, you know, at CNN, I saw you differently. 
Now, sometimes they'll say you were different at CNN. I don't see that. I, I mean, I was certainly different personally because I hadn't gone through this maelstrom, this crucible. But they'll say, you know, when you were at CNN, I didn't like this. But now I do now. And, and I think that there's just so much silo thinking that News Nation is not part of that. And it's getting an opportunity to just be what people see on its air without people thinking, well, I know they're trying to trick me into being this way or that way. And I think that's probably why it's growing. But I, I'm sure that's right. I, I, I'm the last person who would know, as you know. But um, I think it's also important to acknowledge that maybe changes have taken place within you. I mean, your views Absolutely. probably don't agree with all of them. I know I don't. But you do seem a little smart, I will say that, uh, but very self-aware. And That's and, new. And so I wonder if, like, I've, I, well, having been fired and humiliated a lot, I've always thought that men need to be humiliated regularly, especially people who are successful, because otherwise they become totally unbearable. And, and I wonder if that's, like, not the greatest thing that ever happened. It's good to be humiliated. Um... I think that you can find value in it. Uh, there's value in suffering. There's value in struggle. There's value in pain. In fact, I do believe that the things that have shaped my life, when I look back at like what moments mattered and what moves mattered, what events, they're almost all negative. Well, let me flip it around. Have you ever learned anything important from eating French toast in bed on vacation? No. No. Uh, the easy uh, moments don't yield that much. The Chris Cuomo Project is supported by All American Assets. Why? Well, because you need somebody to help you make the right decisions. Scary days in the stock market now. You know, we work hard for the money, but very often you're at a disadvantage, right? You got smarter people who do this for a living, trying to find a way to take advantage of people like us. Here's the good news. Investing in precious metals, never been easier, and can absolutely help in balancing a portfolio. In the last 20 years, gold is up 400%. In the same 20 years, what's the dollar done? It's lost about 60, 65% of its purchasing power. So where do you go? How do you buy gold? What am I gonna put it in my basement? You go to American Assets, all American Assets. And you got a 401k from a previous employer, you got an IRA, you can just roll it over into physical gold and silver or buy gold and silver using cash by sending a check or wire. Check out All American Assets. They offer a wide selection of different commodities, gold and silver, all delivered right to your door in secure, discreet, fully insured packaging. Now is the opportune moment to start investing in precious metals, safeguarding your savings against these volatile markets. I do it. Don't miss out. Visit allamericanassets.com today to explore the diverse range of precious metals, including rounds, coins, bars, uh, and you can sign up for a free one on one gold IRA consultation, okay? It's time to turn your paper savings literally into gold. Visit allamericanassets.com or go and text GOLD, G-O-L-D, to one 390 2522 The Chris Cuomo Project is supported by Cozy Earth. Why? Because I like their sheets, that's why. A lot of people don't get a good night's sleep for a lot of reasons. One of the ones that you can control is bedding. One out of three of us report being sleep deprived. Okay, well, what is it? Well, it stresses all, all kinds of things. But the wrong sheets can make you hot, can make you cold. I'm telling you, I don't believe it either. But Cozy Earth sheets breathe. And here's what I love about them. Cozy Earth's best-selling sheet is a bamboo set, okay? Temperature regulating. Gets softer with every wash. I'm not kidding you, all right? Now, so if you go to CozyEarth.com and you enter the code, enter the code Chris, and you can get up to 35% off your first order. CozyEarth.com, and the code is Chris. So I, so you said, I, I can't complain, I don't have cancer, I haven't fallen off a crane, I think is what you said. Um, and I hope I never get cancer, and I hope I never fall off a crane. But there is something, I know a lot of people have had cancer and are completely fine and grateful to be alive, of course, and they suffer. 
But there is a difference between suffering with an ailment that's not your fault and being publicly humiliated as a result of decisions that you made and suddenly becoming unpopular with all the cool kids. Mm. Like that seems in a lot of ways, I'm not in any way minimizing all the other bad things that happen to people, but that seems like it's in its own category. It's different. Uh, I would argue that I was never really that popular with the cool kids. I've always been uh, kind of boxed out in the media. Why? Because my name's Cuomo. Uh, And when I first wanted to get into this business, I couldn't even get a job at New York One. The reason that I wound up working at Fox News was because Roger Ailes was the only one who would give me a shot. Everywhere else I went, you know, I was a lawyer. I'd been practicing law. And Wait, your like, father's Mario Cuomo. It hurt me. Among the liberal outlets, but it was Roger Ailes who was the only one who gave That's you the right. job? How interesting. Why? He said, so, yeah, a little bit of a long story. But uh, through mutual relationships, he had <laughs> seen me on television. And his joke was... Um, this guy looks like he should be on a soap opera, but he sounds uh, like he's from the inner city. And he said, let let me meet him. And I met him and we talked about a million different things. And he said, look, they're going to make you go to local television and you're going to learn a lot of bad habits. You're going to learn a lot of good things. I'll bring you in here. I see something in you and I'll teach you everything I know. Here's the thing though. If you fail, you're done because you'll be failing at a place where people are going to see you fail. This is not West Virginia. But if you don't fail and you pick it up, you're going to leapfrog ahead of where you would have been otherwise. He said, and here's the good news. You don't seem to give a shit whether you succeed at this or not because I wasn't going into it because I wanted to be a star. I thought there was an incredible opportunity to... Uh, contact people and to show them things and mess with how they feel about things that wasn't being used. It seemed so cookie cutter to me at the time. When I entered the business, they would talk to me about how I tracked and uh, that these aren't movie lines, Chris. You know, you have to read them, you know, there's an intonation and your hands kind of keep your hands down. By the time I left, I was like a model of like, you know, use your hands more. You know, you got to be more natural. Don't sound like everybody else. Things change. So I went there and Roger made good on his promise. He sent me all over the country covering crime, learning the skills of being a broadcaster and an interviewer. The trinity of interviewing, he said to me, he pointed at this, here and here. He said, you've got to balance your head, your heart, and your balls. And there's a time to be ballsy. There's a time to be compassionate. There's a time to be smart. And you got to figure out what the balance is, the alchemy of them. Uh, And he gave me those opportunities. And he told me when I left um, to go to ABC News, he said, you're making a mistake. He said, they will never accept you. And I said, they don't accept me now because I work at Fox News. I was like, you know, this is, I got to go. This is like the real place. And he was like, they're never going to accept you. Was he right? I think to a certain extent, uh, there's uh, been a a selective uh, kind of exclusion, but it never really mattered to me. I didn't go into this business to be a star to make friends. I got my people. And I'm not really friends with a lot of people who are in the media. Uh, I never have been. And uh, if I am, it's because our friendship transcends media. It's not based of it. Um, and the relationships that I had that were largely media-based, they disappeared when I got shit canned, with a few exceptions. Because they're not loyal people. I think that it's like you stop going to the, the nightclub. You know, I hang out in the nightclub. I go to the nightclub. You're not allowed in the nightclub anymore. I guess I'm not going to see you that much. And that's what the relationship was about. I never it, have brunch with Wolf Blitzer anymore. It's weird. I love Wolf Blitzer. I called him the captain. I thought that he was such, is such, I don't know what I'm talking about in past tense. Wolf is such a great exemplar of what I wanted to be in that business. He's unfailingly kind. He does what he thinks is right and he works his ass off. Um, uh, I, I called him the captain. I, I miss him. Um, I miss a lot of them, but life goes on. 
He's unfailingly polite. I would definitely say that, having worked with him. Oh, it's more than that. If you talk to the people who stars are usually not nice to, you know how they'll say, oh, he or she, they're a little hard on the furniture. Furniture is a metaphor for these other human beings <laughs> that are doing jobs in production. No, it's so and stuff. true. And he, you won't find someone. He's the kind of person that if you say you don't like Wolf, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> not because of, it's not because of him. Me, you can dislike. <laughs> like I have people who have the same last name who will say, oh, hold on, I love the guy. These are things I don't like. I'll tell you one thing you and I share. You, I notice this when people talk about your wife. When they talk about your wife, they talk the same way they do about my wife. Yeah. Oh, when you meet her, she's the nicest person. <laughs> she is a good person. Yeah. And, and then a little subtly, it's like, as opposed to <laughs> the guy she's married to. We, uh, we have a phrase for that in my house. It's called DA, the designated asshole. And that's my job. That's my job, baby. I own it. I own it. But I'm trying. Uh, and I believe that even this is a function of that. People aren't going to like this. Uh, they're either going to say that I should have basically been raking you over the coals all the time. Otherwise, there's no value to this. I'm just allowing people to not see you for what you are. And I just... I just don't think that gets us anywhere. And I think people can make their own minds up about well, that. That's just a silly partisan point on either side. And of course, that's that's the past. I do think it's bigger of me though than you. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> I'll tell you why. I'll, I'll tell you why. I was thinking about this actually during the conversation. Um, one, you're less injured by what happened to you than I am. You are killing it business-wise, right? Everything you do is huge. And your boy Musk, uh, meeting with Trump, by the way, to, to fund his campaign now. I want to get your, your head on that. Um, but I feel like this was really, I'm surprised that I was able <laughs> to listen to our counsel um, and say, wait, no, this guy has done nothing but hit me like a pinata. And I decided, you know what? That was then. And let me meet him on his the, own terms. The, the funny thing is... But that was I, big for me. I'm a very I small person. I barely remember that. I know. <laughs> I hate that. I hate it. Because I remember all of them. So I have a really good friend who I talked to this morning. He's just a wonderful man. Uh, and his name is Glenn Greenwald. And you can agree or disagree with his views on He things. has also kicked my ass on a regular basis. No one, no one was ever meaner to me than Glenn Greenwald. No one ever. <laughs> and he must have written... 50 pieces calling me various names, all unpleasant names. And we ended up six or seven years ago meeting and finding that we agreed on some things, not everything, obviously, but some things. And that friendship, and I think it's fair to call it a friendship, uh, has just brought me so much joy. It's so nice to see that someone is like, that you're wrong about your assessment of somebody and the person, someone's like way better. And I have to say, I've had that experience so much in my life. It's the greatest privilege of this job is to meet people and find that they're nothing like the caricature. Occasionally they're worse, you know, but that or is- Or you're right about whatever they right. are. Or you're right, that's exactly right. That has happened to me, having interviewed thousands of people as you have. But I would say most of the time, I'm like, I like that guy. Do you know what I mean? It, I really have felt that. Depends how you meet him and, you know, the context. I think the context matters. Sometimes people are in performance mode. They're being what they think they need oh, to be course, in right. a thing. What did Greenwald say when you said you were going to talk to me? I didn't, I didn't tell him. Really? Yeah, we were talking about? about something else. What do you think uh, he would have said? What do you think he will say? I don't know. I didn't know he was opposed to you. Um, I don't know that he's opposed. I don't think that I really matter to him. But I mean, you know, he's come after me now and again. I'm an easy op I'm an easy target of opportunity. I get that now. <laughs> you know, having a year of not being on and watching um, TV, um, which I don't do a lot of news watching. Um, I don't like it to confuse what I think the right angles and the right things are for me to do on on my show. But Having that time to watch and to think, and re I'd probably come after me too. You know, it, it pretty. Well, I will say it's fu it's fun. I'm just being honest. You should do that. It's really not my way, <laughs> by the way. But I got to tell you, you made it hard <laughs> to try to not play the game that was being played on the other side of it. But I do. <laughs> I, but I do know this, and I know this, and I, I know I, I know it again. What I signed up for. I know two things about our business. Okay. One is the two-party system has failed us. Yes. And Trump versus Biden 
all due respect to them and their fans, okay? I'm not impugning them as people, although Trump I could go down the road with. The fact that they're the choices and that the country sees that they are inadequate choices only has one source, the party system. It has failed us. It's not in the Constitution. It's not a creature of law. It's just tradition. The Supreme Court said that in the 1970s. It's got to go. I don't know how it goes. I don't need to know how to go so when you go to, to know that it's a problem. When but you that's go the first to Thanksgiving, thing I Thanksgiving, a family Thanksgiving, I mean, you're the son and brother of two of the most famous governors yes. in the last 50 This does years. not go over well. <laughs> it doesn't, okay. Because I like, have real Democrats and real Republicans in my family. And what I say to them is, you know, or, which, by the way, I say very little because, you know, I, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get my holiday on here. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. But what is your party even about? What are you except they suck? What are you? What are, what are Republicans now? Because I remember back in the day, I married into a real Republican family. They are real people of character, of fiscal austerity. Uh, they have a different position than the current orthodoxy about what policy should be abroad. Uh, character counts. You know, they, they were real conservatives, okay? That's not what that party is anymore. Democrats, my father's Democratic Party, he was all about workers. He was about the underclass. But he was about government uh, does everything you needed to do and nothing more. You help the people who can't help themselves. That's what it was supposed to do. And it was supposed to try to find ways for people to cooperate. That's what he was all about. I remember sitting in the executive mansion in Albany. And he had the head of the Senate, Italian guy, Ralph Marino. They were absolutely at each other throats, okay? Budgets and stuff like that, right? Pop was the governor. This guy was the head of the Republican Party, basically. He brings Ralph Marino over. They sit on the couch, opens a bottle of wine, or I think I actually opened the bottle of the wine. And they started talking and my father was like, you know, Ralph, you know, I don't want to hear this and this about me. And Ralph's like, fine, you're right. That went too far. But what you're trying to do with this is... Uh, this just is not right. And you're trying to force it on us and you're holding this thing. And they had this whole conversation, a Republican and a Democrat. This guy was the leader on the Senate, you know, state side, okay? He had no business by today's rules being in that house, let alone making a deal, not a bad deal, not subterfuge, but I get it. We disagree, but we got too hot and- that's, that's a mistake. Now, how do we make this budget? How do we get this done? That's what it was about. And by the way, that was tortured enough. What we are now is, you're a traitor if you're in that room. Of course. And I know two things. The two-party system has failed us, and we have to have more voices and more conversation, not less. I know it. And that doesn't mean that people have to agree. In fact, the opposite is better. <laughs> and I know I'm going to get beat up for it. And that's okay, because that's what I signed up for. But I'm happy that we did this. I think there's value in it to people. And some won't think that, but I'm not going for all. I'm only going for some, because there's only a small slice of people right now who have an open mind about it. The winnables. My firing is not more important than your firing. Um, why do you think that you were the one? Like, you know, you're getting my head on why it was me. Yeah. Why do you think it was you? I mean, it, strictly speaking, I have no idea. I've never been told. Um, I've heard a lot of people throw around theories, but I don't know which are true. Um, and I don't really care. But more broadly, I understand why. It's called destiny. You know, you're just, your, your life has an arc and a path, and you don't know what it is, but you can feel it, you know, happen. But um, you didn't say, why me? What about all these other people? No. I felt like this was always going to happen. It doesn't, um, I mean, I was shocked for like three minutes, but that was it. Well, I talked to you right after, I mm -hmm. think, within a couple of days. And no, I was, this is my path. And there will come a time when you, you know, you show up for your annual physical and he's like, stage four pancreatic. And you're like, okay. You know, I mean, that's just, that's just what, that's what it is. Mm. And so I'm almost never really shocked by anything that happens, but that I just immediately saw the upside and because I wasn't mad. And uh, I wasn't mad, actually. And um, are you on medication? I don't. I don't take Advil, like even really? Advil. So this is just you. 
oh, you'll never meet anyone who's more opposed to pills than I am, or really? any any intoxicants of any kind other than nicotine and coffee. That's it. I don't. That's I don't. where our roads diverge. Dude, in the world. I am. <laughs> I am about better life through chemistry. <laughs> no, I don't take anything ever, like ever. In fact, I had a back spasm yesterday. I've had back surgery and it hurt. It's like I'm not taking Advil. Um, no, I'm just totally opposed to that. That's a whole other conversation. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I'm with. Who's that weird actor in Scientology? I can't remember. Tom Cruise. You had to reach for Tom Cruise's name? I couldn't remember. I'm sorry, I couldn't remember. I couldn't remember. But he gave some speech on TV a few years ago or several years ago, 10 years ago, about how SSRIs and all stuff is evil. And everyone's like, he's crazy. And I was like the only person. It's like, you go, Tom Cruise. (laughs) You were on the wrong side of that. No, dude. I was so, I'm all about that. Anyway, no, I I really felt that it was destiny as I feel that most things are. Hmm. I think there is a plan. Anyway, I just want to thank you. That was like the most interesting conversation I've had in a long time, and I sincerely enjoyed it. I believe in conversation. Amen. I appreciate an invitation to your thank house. Thank you. And the lines are open. I'll be telling you how much everybody hates me for this, because you won't be paying attention. <laughs> no, I won't. <laughs> At all. <laughs> You'll be laughing. I'll be crying. <laughs> but I won't be. This was the right thing to do. Thank you, Tucker. Thank you for giving conversation a chance. Tucker Carlson and Chris Cuomo can speak together. Any two people can find common concern. Let's get after it.